I highly recommend you to please watch all the videos of this series just before the day of examination so that the concepts will be fresh in your mind. If you miss question number 1 to 1 under 10, please check previous parts of the series. Let's mark the keyword. We'll look at option C and D. So this is the first time we are looking into this kind of interface. If you like this one, please let me know in the comment section below or if you like the formal one like in the previous parts, also please let me know so that I can uh, give the better decision and bring out more videos like that. So let's focus on option C and D. C says high ability, D says fault tolerance. High ability and fault tolerance are associated with disaster recovery. That is, if the entire infrastructure is down, how quickly we can make it operational once again. We do not require these, right, as per the question. So C and D are out. Let's look at option A. A says decoupled architecture. Decoupled architecture is the opposite of monolithic architecture. Decoupling means that the resources should work independent of each other. Again, this is irrelevant as per the question. We'll reject this. We are left out with resource elasticity. If we look here in the official documentation, it's written the other aspect is to contract when they no longer need resources, scale out and scale in, scale up and down. That's what is elasticity. You can have a read at this article. We'll lock option B, resource elasticity, as the correct answer for this. All righty. This looks good because the question is about SAML 2.0. We'll look at option B, C, and D together. B, C is AWS SDK, known as Software Development Kit. C is AWS Single Sign-On and D is AWS CLI that is command line interface. The key point to note here is that all user wants to log in to third party business application and not via AWS services. So these three if you look are AWS services where uh, we directly log in. So uh, we don't uh, need this right. We can reject these three options. And if you look here in the official documentation Amazon Cognito supports authentication with identity providers through security assertion markup language 2.2 also known as SAML 2.2. So that's what is required. We'll lock option A as the correct answer. All right, all right. This question will test your migration related concepts, especially with regard to large number of or huge data. So let's uh, look at option B first. B says AWS Snowball Edge. Snowball Edge has storage capacity up to 210 terabytes, uh, which is not good enough for 60 petabytes of data as required by the question here. So B is out. Let's move to option C. C says AWS Data Exchange. AWS Data Exchange cannot help with the migration of data as it's not a data migration service. Therefore, we can eliminate this. Let's move to option D. D says AWS Data Migration Service. Interesting. As per the question, there is a mention of file storage data, right? So database migration service is not suitable for migrating file storage data. Instead, as the name suggests, database migration, it's meant for databases. So D is out. We are left out with only one option, AWS Snowmobile. And uh, we can compare the entire Snow family here. Recently, Snowball Edge, uh, the capacity has increased. It's uh, 210 uh, terabytes. Um, uh, for uh, previously it was 80 terabytes something uh, in previous videos you might have seen but you got to update with the latest concepts as I always mentioned that keep yourself updated which I always do in my videos and uh, for the correct answer that is uh, AWS Snowball if you look it's uh, it can uh, support up to 100 petabytes of data so as per our question it was 60 petabytes so this is the requirement like only Snowmobile can fit the needs so this looks good. We'll lock option A as the correct answer. We are at question number 114. We'll look at option B first. B says AWS Snowball. Snowball as seen in previous uh, uh, like uh, question is a data migration service from on-prem to cloud. The question if you look 
is not about migration at all so we don't need snowball b is out let's move to option c and d together c says amazon work link d says uh, elastic beanstalk so amazon work link and elastic beanstalk does not help to stream desktop application to web browsers um, as required by the question it's an um, incorrect choice let's look at the official documentation it's written amazon app stream 2.0 is a specific mention low cost virtual desktop so that's what we require as per the question right we will lock option a as the correct answer okay this question seems to be easy because just by looking at the keyword you might be knowing the answer so we'll look at option a and b first a says elastic file system b says elastic block storage also known as block store ebs so a and b we cannot query data using elastic file system or elastic block store because as per the keyword it's also querying right and these two cannot query a and b are out let's move to option c c says uh, rds rds we know is a relational database and is not suitable to store uh, especially the log data if the size of the log data increases on daily basis then uh, the cost will be an issue as per the question we need to address the cost as well so for this we know s3 is the best fit whenever you see log data quick tip for the exam whenever you see questions related to uh, storing log data then think about s3 s3 is the best option which we uh, use in real life projects as well we'll log this this seems to be a brainstorming question let's look at option a and c first a says ec2 c says lambda so ec2 and lambda are both compute service the question is related to security if you look so a and c are out let's look at option d d says aws waf also known as web application firewall if you look at the question there is no mention of sql injection nor cross site scripting so we don't need aws waf d is out we are left out in one option let's look at the official documentation is a mention of auditing actions taken by user role or aws service are recorded as events in cloudtrail events include actions taken in the aws management console aws cli and aws sdk and apis that's what is the keyword lock option b is the correct answer all right this is very straight forward question if we want to automatically adjust the number of ec2 instances based on the workload then uh, we need to use the auto scaling feature in swell keep option a and uh, reject the rest if you look here in the official documentation it says amazon ec2 auto scaling helps you ensure that you have the correct number of amazon ec2 instances available to handle the load for your application is um, also diagrammatic view of how scaling works uh, these are like permanent and these two can scale based upon the loads that is uh, two inch more two instances will be spin uh, so you can uh, have a read at this if you are uh, new to auto scaling because it is a uh, very widely used concept uh, in day to day uh, cloud right so will lock option e as the correct answer all right this question should be a piece of cake for you because uh, as per the keyword Uh, this looks easy so whenever you see keywords like sensitive data or personally identifiable information also known as pii in the question then think about amazon macy and you should get your answer will keep option b and reject the rest if you look here in the official documentation it says amazon macy is a data security service that discovers sensitive data by using machine learning and pattern matching provides visibility into data security risk and enables automated protection against those risk so just remember sensitive data messy messy sensitive data that's how you remember 
and will lock option B as the correct answer. Let's bring the heat to the snow. Whenever you see keywords like exceeds the threshold where you need to send alerts, uh, any kind of alerts like email or SNS notification for questions related to cost, then think about AWS budget. Therefore, we'll keep option A, that is AWS budget and reject the rest. Let's look at the official documentation. It says with AWS budgets, set custom budgets to track your cost usage and respond quickly to alerts. Just note the keywords I've already highlighted in red pen. Received from email or SNS notification. If you exceed your threshold, will lock option E as the correct answer. All righty. This question is about S3 and it will test your concept. This is very important topic with respect to exam. Let's look at option A. A says S3 intelligent Turing. S3 intelligent Turing automatically moves object within S3 uh, like from standard tier to glacier tier to save uh, cost. Intelligent Turing is a cost oriented feature and not speed oriented feature which is required by the question. So A is out. Let's move to option B. B says S3 versioning. Versioning helps to prevent accidental deletion of objects present in S3 by keeping multiple versions. It again cannot help to move files uh, for over long distance as required by the question here. So B is out. Let's now look at option C. C says S3 cross region replication also known as CRR. Cross region replication as the name implies that it replicates the objects within the same region. It's a kind of duplicating the data. Again, it has nothing to do with speed of transferring the data to long distance. So C is out. We are left out with one option, S3 transfer exploration. It's written, transfer exploration is a bucket level feature that enables fast, easy, and secure transfers of files over long distance between your client and an S3 bucket. So that's what is required. You can have a read at this documentation. We'll lock option D as a correct answer. So please, please, please don't go away. If you want the PDF version of it, please enroll in diamond membership or above. Then connect and inbox me on LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit or Instagram at the rate of Amit Physique. I'll be glad to help you out with a PDF access.